In this video, what I wanted to share with you guys is how I am making a part-time income from the blogs that I run as well as my YouTube channel. Um, as you guys know, this YouTube channel is pretty new um, and I also have another YouTube channel that has been around for a bit, but I haven't created content on it. So I'm gonna share with you my strategies there as well as my blog income reports for uh, last month. And it's gonna be really exciting because I'm actually generating uh, some income from two of my blogs, which is really, really amazing. And they're really different in terms of niches. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you as well as two other blogs that I'm starting up. I have a ton of different revenue streams that um, I basically am trying out just to see what I like. And so what I wanna do is kinda share the strategies with you as well as which ones are making money, what my thought process is along the way. As you guys know, I'm a mom of four. I also work outside of the home. And so I'm doing a lot of this in the margins of life. If you guys are wanting to start something or just be inspired by some of the creativity that you get from running some of these side hustles that um, honestly make a little bit of money on the side, I, that's what I wanna do. I wanna inspire you guys to go out there, start creating content, because honestly, the journey is really fun. The income that you make is just like icing on the cake um, throughout all this, because honestly, the journey of just creating content and seeing it like succeed is really amazing. And also when it fails, I mean, it, it sucks at the time, but you're learning something from it. So I wanted to kind of share my journey with you, my honest journey with you guys, just to inspire you guys and show you that it is possible to make money online. And honestly, the reaction that I got from my parents when I showed them the income that they were making from doing a cooking blog about the recipes they brought from their homeland, like it's really, really incredible and really, really powerful at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in and share with you guys my income report just so that you guys can see where I'm at. If you guys are wondering uh, where I'm at right now, I'm in the basement. Uh, my husband actually created this little um, room for me down here where we painted everything like white except for the floors, which is epoxied. And I needed a space to kind of record and do a lot of like blogging stuff uh, away from my actual office because I'm a remote worker and so I'm always in that office so I needed a space where you know I could just film video that was clean and so this is it and that's the room that I'm in so I wanted to tell you guys why I'm doing this why I'm sharing my income reports with you online on the, all the different channels that I have and honestly it's to inspire a lot of you guys who are too afraid to try or are too afraid of the technical learning curve. I mean, you've got to start somewhere. And honestly, failure, like even if you fail one time, it's okay, you can continue to iterate on that. Um, and that's what I actually tell some of the engineers that I work with too, like it's okay. Like when you develop something, it's okay to fail, like just get up and do it again. And failure basically is a way to teach you something so that you can succeed the next time around. And it's okay if you fail two or three times in a row. If you continue challenging yourself, you'll be able to like, understand and learn from it and move on. So that's really, really what I want to share with you guys is it wasn't without a lot of failures that I was able to get to where I'm at. And even though a lot of you guys are like, well, for doing this for 10 decades and only making about five grand, like that's not very much, but I'm doing this in the margins of life. Like literally I have four kids that, you know, I had while I stood up my lifestyle blog and I have a corporate career that I've managed to maintain and as well as like a husband at home. So I'm doing this all in the margins of life and it's okay uh, wherever you're at in your journey. Even if you're only making like a few pennies, honestly, it's totally worth it because if you enjoy this as a hobby, as well as the benefit of it making money, it's just a great journey and I feel like um, I can't say that enough or just stress that enough because a lot of people focus on the money, but honestly, the journey is so worth it because you're learning about entrepreneurship, you're learning about business cycles, you're learning all these different skills on data analytics um, and also understanding the value of a customer or a reader. Um, I can't stress how important that that is to you as an entrepreneur, as well as using that as a skill set for a career that you might be trying to get. So that's why I wanna create this video, is to inspire all you guys that the skill sets that you learn in this hobby is not just making money, but also like the, just the business cycle so that if you ever endeavor on another type of, you know, product or service that you wanna sell or even a career that you wanna go into, like this is an amazing hobby that will teach you all of that and more. So, okay off my soapbox. In the last income report, I told you guys Q4 is insane for publishers because um, there are companies that are literally trying to get rid of their ad revenue because ads obviously run on my blogs. And so they're trying to get rid of their ad revenue so that they can create a budget for next year. And so a lot of times they're throwing a ton of money um, towards advertisements, which means great news for us as publishers because they are basically throwing all these ads on your site. So that is amazing. But December generally is lower than November for whatever reason for me. So um, I want to share with you guys real quick um, all the different revenue streams so that you guys have an understanding of what I'm going to show you. So the lifestyle blog. Lifestyle blog has been around for about 10 years 
and it is bringing me passive income. I used to do a lot of sponsor posts and now I've kind of switched it to uh, more ads because I really want to just write what I want to write about instead of having to follow like brand guidelines and all that stuff for um, sponsored posts. So I've kind of switched um, that business model a little bit and honestly I don't want to sell a product or service on it. Um, it's just not my thing. Um, I don't think I'd enjoy it. So honestly ad revenue is where it's at for the lifestyle blog. All right so I'm going to show you guys real quick on my Google Analytics here um, the traffic that went to my lifestyle blog so you guys can see here um, it went down to 64,068 views because I had this Christmas tree collar project that um, just basically took off on Pinterest um, which is where I was getting a lot of my traffic for this um, site and so it went from like 90 to 64 and so that's what you're seeing here so for the month of December um, I made two thousand five hundred two dollars and fifty nine cents last month I made a little over uh, four hundred dollars more um, and so I'll get paid out on March 5th of 2021 um, if I go and show you guys what the Google Analytics looks like. Um, I'm going to show you here real quick under acquisition where my traffic is coming from. Okay, so if I go to acquisition and then traffic and then channels, you can see that a lot of my traffic comes from social and then organic and then direct. And so as you can see, 29,707 from social. And if I click on this, I know it's Pinterest, right? And so I've got to up my uh, Pinterest strategy. I've been using um, Tailwind a lot for managing a lot of my um, pins and all that stuff, but I feel like I'm getting lower traffic and lower impressions and low, lower click-throughs through Pinterest. So I'm trying to uh, figure out how do I change my strategy? Do I manually pin? Where do I get the time to manually pin? Where do I get the time to create new graphics for it? And so that's what I'm trying to understand. But overall, um, the Pinterest is 29,587. Now, YouTube is an interesting one because I actually started up my YouTube uh, channel again for my lifestyle blog. And that one I'm only posting once a week. And so with YouTube, it's a little bit different because I feel like with a blog, you can create content. And then a year later, eight months to a year later, you can get more. You'll see like how much potential your actual blog post will get versus on YouTube. Um, I feel like with YouTube, you understand um, how much traffic you'll get after like a few days of it being live. And so that's where I'm like, I mean, you'll continue to get um, traffic um, from YouTube, but I feel like the very beginning uh, posts or beginning like traffic is really, really important to the algorithm uh, for YouTube. So anyway, um, what I, all I'm trying to say there is like in the YouTube uh, videos that are related to any of my posts, I'll go ahead and put a link out there. And so it's just really interesting to actually see the YouTube um, YouTube channel actually kind of grow and so I, I should figure out how I can like kind of track like the graph for YouTube um, as I continue to create more content on YouTube but that's just really interesting and so um, as you can see here I made uh, $2,502 so not too shabby uh, for the lifestyle blog that I've been maintaining for the last 10 years and honestly um, I don't really enjoy <laughs> writing content on it um, it's all about like DIY projects and when I whenever I create content on this um, site, it's actually a lot of work. So whenever I'm creating the content for the lifestyle blog, um, I have to do the project, so it's about two, three hours, and then I have to write about it, and then I have to take photos and edit the photos, and then I have to do the pin image, and I have to do the video, and then I have to do the how-to card and post it and make sure it's SEO worthy. So it's like eight or nine different things I have to do for it. Um, and it takes actually the most work out of all my different channels uh, that I'm trying to maintain. And so this one, I really hate creating content for, but it's the one right now that's bringing me the most consistent income from all of my different channels. So let's talk about the cooking blog. The cooking blog is actually a labor of love. Um, my mom and I have tried to start uh, serial entrepreneurial business businesses in the last like decade. One of them was like a baby tutu store because she's a seamstress. She's a professional seamstress. And so she created these little tutus for my kids. And um, you know, that didn't work out. It was supposed to be an Etsy shop. So I was like, you know what? That's too much work. Like I have to buy too much toll. I have to sew too much. Like that is not a very good business plan. And so I had this crazy idea of, hey, like no one really writes about like lotion or Thai or Vietnamese food. I'm going to go ahead and write about it. And so sure enough, like 18 months later, um, we're making about $1,700. So I'll show you that guys that, but I want to show you the traffic real quick so you can see the progression of it. So on the cooking channel, um, I've got 61,000 page views, about 50,481 sessions. So uh, that's really amazing. If I go back and look um, since we've started, let me go all the way over to, let's say, I think it was June or July of last year, you guys can see the progression of the traffic. And we've got about a hundred and some um, posts on this site. And it's just really incredible to see something like that. We started like last year 
kind of take off like this, um, which is really, really amazing to me. And so this blog is kind of near and dear to my heart um, because my parents have always been like blue collar workers. They've always done labor work. My mom's a seamstress. My dad um, is a machinist and also he's like a labor worker. And so when I said, hey, let's go create a website um, and just share some of the recipes that you made for me as a kid on this blog and we can make money off of it, you know, like, like most people, they're like very skeptical on it. And so when I showed them today, I actually called them, wished them a happy new year. And then I showed them um, the analytics on this. And then I showed them the income that they were making from this because we were like sharing the revenue. It was just really amazing to me when he was like, this is incredible. This is crazy. This is insane. But, you know, he saw all the work that it took to go create the food and for me to write about it and all the questions I was asking him about like the recipes and stuff. And so to be able to kind of see him smile like that is just amazing. And then to have the recipes on a website that I can share with my kids uh, moving forward is just amazing to me. And so it's just, it's just really fun. Like I'm at a point where it's just like, it, it's just fun. And so being part of this journey and seeing it grow and seeing it succeed, it's amazing. And so the idea behind this blog is that, you know, first it's ad revenue and then I'll figure out what to do with like this email distribution list that I have over 600 people for their site on. Um, I could do a cookbook. I could do some Amazon Kindle publishing. Um, I could uh, go find a sticky rice um, maker person who I can create the product for and then sell that product because sticky rice is apparently a big uh, deal here. And so um, there's just so many endless possibilities for this blog. But moving on to the actual income that I'm making from it, if I actually go to Mediavine, here is what we're making off of Mediavine. We're making $1,799.07. Um, for the month of December. And that is actually more than November. So on the lifestyle blog, I went down versus hers went up. And it might be because her traffic was going up too. I'm not sure, but there, um, the RPM here is $34.65. If I go back, um, mine was $43.04. So I get a higher RPM on my lifestyle blog, which is all about motherhood and DIY projects. But hers is recipes and she's getting about a uh, little less than $10 uh, less than mine, but she's making um, almost as much money as me. And we have very similar traffic patterns right now. So I'm making about $4,300 uh, this month with um, both of them. And my affiliate income from Amazon is actually around $300 or so. I won't show that because I don't know what the ramifications of showing uh, that report is, but it's about $300 for um, affiliate revenue from Amazon across both of those blogs. Um, and I'm not very good at like keeping track of the tags and what links go and what tags. And so um, I know that it's about $300 that I'm making from there. And then reward style, I also got $100 in check. And reward style is also like a, an affiliate program, but they run across all different brands. Like uh, for instance, I will link out to Home Depot or uh, Best Buy and like Target and Walmart and all that from reward style. And so those are the affiliates that I'm working with, but honestly, I am terrible at like promoting affiliate links and all that. Um, so that's why I'm not doing a very good job. I actually took a course on it too. And um, I know that I'm not following their strategies because I'm not consistent in putting affiliate links, but I'm trying. Um, but about three or $400 is what I can expect on affiliate revenue um, every single month from across all the different uh, channels that I have. Another channel that I run is my tech blog. It is a uh, very niche uh, technology that I'm talking about. It is a topic that I knew a lot about in my previous career and so I'm writing about it to kind of put down like what I've learned and I'm also learning new things along the way as I research like all these different topics that I kind of know about and then kind of understand a little bit more. The reason why I'm doing it is number one, I want to make sure that I solidify my understanding of the topic in general. And so it gives me an outlet to and a reason why to research that topic. Two, um, it is a fun technology. And so I love learning about this technology and it's trending and it's emerging. And so it's just really fun. And there are already a lot of big players in it. So I just want to kind of test it out and compare the RPMs from that site to the cooking site versus the lifestyle site. So it's more of like experimentation as well as kind of solidifying my expertise in that space. And three, it is something that I'm kind of in, in terms of my um, professional career. It's almost like a tangential subject area of the space that I'm in. And I can also see it being a big emerging technology for smaller businesses. And so that's why I'm investing time in creating content around that space. So I want to make sure that I kind of position myself as someone who can explain it to small businesses, um, 
as this technology um, continues to emerge and improve and all that. And so um, I'm honestly, I just started like creating more content on it consistently. I have about 30 blog posts. So if I look at the analytics on this, I, again, I only have 30 blog posts on this site. I have um, in the last 30 days, 994 page views with 449 sessions. So to me, it looks like um, a lot of the people that are looking at it are looking at one to two pages. What's really interesting is that um, I'm getting a lot of traffic from India, which is interesting. And it also concerns me because if I want to run ads on this, which I'm actually doing, Google AdSense, I'm running Google AdSense on this, um, but I'm only making pennies, by the way, so I really don't count it as income. But um, my concern is that with Mediavine and AdThrive and some of these other uh, ad networks, if I have um, India as uh, one of my main sources, like I don't think I would be accepted into their publishing platform because I think they are focused more on US based uh, visitors and so they're very picky in that and so that's that's really my concern so so I'm really not making very much money off of this um, I'll continue and create content on this I'm hoping to get to about 60 or so blog posts by the end of 2021 um, and see where we can go from there but I don't think that um, I'll be monetizing next year honestly because of how slow I am at creating content for this site okay so so let's talk about the YouTube channels. Um, I realize now that similar to blogs, um, YouTube requires you to post on a weekly basis and that makes its algorithm happy. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. So these income reports definitely help. But if you are honestly trying to get into the blog game or the YouTube game, like you shouldn't even be watching videos and consuming videos. You should be writing content or creating content like I am. I'm literally creating content and focus more on that versus consuming video. But uh, regardless, um, I'm trying to create more content on this site as well as my lifestyle YouTube site. Okay, so this YouTube channel is all about tech gear and also uh, making money online. And so that is what this channel is all about. And the other site is a lifestyle uh, YouTube channel that is kind of like a reflection of my lifestyle blog and that's more DIY projects as well as motherhood tips and tricks. Um, I actually just took down all of my vacation videos from that site because I want to create another channel on that as well. It's called Chasing Experiences, but um, I haven't started that yet. I'm probably going to uh, take the videos that I took down from the motherhood site and move them to that channel when I actually figure out um, how I can consistently create content for that channel as well. But honestly, like I feel like creating content uh, via video is way easier than doing a blog post. Um, but I do know that um, per view and per impression, you make less money when it comes to YouTube versus like being on a blog platform where you're making money from um, publishers like Mediavine and AdThrive. And so I'm just trying to diversify my income streams. And so right now I'm not monetized on either YouTube channels, but I can see the growth so far. And so this next section, I'm gonna look at uh, video analytics for YouTube so that you can see where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my analytics here. Um, my channel in the last 28 days got 19,000 views, 1.1K watch times, and 133 subscribers. So thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. Um, as you guys can see, my expensive desk chair got a lot of views. Um, I didn't realize that my review of a chair would uh, become such a hot commodity, but it was. I also have a standing desk review and um, a monitor review. So apparently those are big uh, hits on this channel. And so what that tells me is I should do more tech uh, reviews and gear. And so that's what I'm focused on. Um, I'm trying to create more content on a weekly basis. So I'm almost there to the monetization. So if I go to monetization, I've got 305 subscribers and 3,054 public watch hours. And so I'm almost there, not quite. And um, this channel, again, I started like maybe last year and I didn't really consistently create content until a few months ago. All right, my motherhood channel, um, again, neither of these have become monetized just yet. But as you can see here, um, I can go to my analytics and then show you guys. Um, I got 15,900 views in the last 28 days, 527 watch hours and 49 plus subscribers in the last month. And the biggest uh, videos in this period are actually about the painted ceilings in this space that I have right now. So that's really, really interesting. And then I also have the Chrysler Pacifica um, minivans. I was trying to show people how to like stream videos for their kids, like in my minivan. And so that uh, was high. And that one was like, 
crappy video. I literally took my mobile phone and like recorded how to do it and um, it's one of the most watched videos. So there you have it. It's almost like the crappier the video is, um, the more views I get. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I, I'm trying. So I'm just putting content out there to see what sticks. And then once I figure out what I enjoy doing as well as what's gonna get views, that's where I will hone in on my niche. But right now this is what's um, getting traffic on this site. And so obviously I have more subscribers here. So this channel is actually growing faster than my lifestyle channel, which makes sense because I'm kind of niched down, but I hope I'm niched down enough on this channel. It's tech gear, it's online marketing, it's making money online. And so I'm hoping YouTube understands what I'm all about. And if you guys can, please go ahead and hit the like button. Don't even subscribe, just hit on the like button. That'll help the algorithm out to share my video with more people. I really, really appreciate it. In terms of expenses for the blog, the two big expenses, you know, across all of my different platforms are, um, first off, Big Scoots, which is my hosting company. Um, I would highly, highly recommend them because I went with some other ones and they were terrible. I even tried doing um, Digital Ocean and it was horrible because I had to go find like a, um, a freelancer that would like do all the back end technical work for me and that that was horrible so i would highly highly recommend big scoots i paid around hundred dollars a month and i am able to run 10 blogs with that um and then the other one is adobe creative suite which is around 55 dollars a month um those are my two biggest expense expenses for my blogs and obviously um, my time is a huge expense right so i'm spending a lot of time on it but again it's in the margins of life and so those are my just two biggest expenses and i'll go ahead and link down to all my expenses that i have that i run um, my business with down below i know that for 2021 my goal is to create more content um, the intent is to create a piece of new content for each of my different um, platforms every week um, that's new and so i know that sometimes i might not be able to do that and that's okay but my goal is to continue consistent content creation because that is important rather than to analyze numbers and try to figure out all these new tactics and tricks and also trying to kind of uh, also ride the waves on the new features and technology some of these platforms kind of bring out because sometimes it causes me to squirrel and not create content the way that's a long way of saying focus on creating content and continue that consistent content creation and stop chasing stuff. Um, it's just really exciting to me to see uh, how these platforms are kind of growing and also uh, where each of them can be different in terms of revenue streams. And so that's really what my focus is, is creating new content on a weekly basis for each of the different platforms when I can in the margins of the life. And I'm running all of my different projects using a Kanban method. Um, so basically I know that for each one of my channels, I have a content piece of content I need to create every week. And I plan them accordingly on a weekly basis so that when I'm, when I have time and I'm able to sit down, I know what I'm supposed to be talking about and writing about, and I'll create content based off of that. At this point, um, this is just so fun for me, just learning how to do this stuff. And I think once I took that mindset and approach of, hey, this is just fun, and if we make money along the way, we make money along the way, but I know a lot of you guys are focused on that. I honestly was focused on that at the beginning of my um, blogging journey, but right now, um, just being able to be in the mindset of, what can I learn? How can I improve and how can I, this is the magic key here is, how can I help my readers uh, be better at what they're doing? That is the biggest takeaway out of all of this because once I figured out what my blog post should be about, what my video should be about, it's about helping the reader, helping the person that's looking and consuming your content, um, helping them in whatever shape or form, that in turn will help you uh, be better as a creator because you now understand your audience and it sounds really free you right now but honestly when you kind of figure out what that means it takes different people different amounts of time to understand that once you figure out what your audience wants that's when things will click i promise you and honestly when you get to the point where it's really boring and all you're doing is cranking out content that's when you know you figured out like the secret sauce <laughs> like honestly like when you figure out the boring part of the business that's the secret sauce and I'm not even kidding like creating content going ahead and editing video editing content that really is the uh, bread and butter of content creation and money making when it comes to online marketing uh, with a blog with a uh, YouTube channel with whatever platform online it's content creation content creation is king I also have a uh, email newsletter that I send out on a weekly basis where I share my income reports when I update it and it shares more detail than I have on this YouTube channel 
Go ahead and check out the link below where you can subscribe. You'll get a password uh, with access to the vault as well as be uh, subscribed to my email channel. In the vault, you'll find historical uh, links to all of my income reports as well as um, ebooks and all that that I've uh, created for, to help out small businesses as well as uh, small uh, startup entrepreneurs like bloggers and YouTubers and all that. So go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter below and you'll get access to the password and all that good stuff. Um, the courses that I've taken and the ones that I would recommend I'll go ahead and link below. First one is Income School. Uh, those guys are amazing, and I've said this in different videos, and I don't tout anything that I haven't used myself or paid with my own money um, in terms of courses. And so the Income School guys are freaking amazing. Go watch their videos. Like They taught me a lot of the things that I didn't know um, in my first eight years of blogging, and then the last two years when I found them, that's when I started churning, and that's when I started like understanding things. And uh, the cooking site, the recipe site that I run with my mom was based off of their uh, teaching Teaching. So there's that. I've also linked down below um, the uh, business of blogging, and that's run by another blogger that um, is was a Kansas City, and at some point I met her at a conference, and she taught me all things there was um, in terms of influencer marketing, and um, I've seen her at conferences, and so she's just a phenomenal person to kind of understand and get to know. She knows how to brand herself, and she also knows how to market herself and um, basically get what you're worth in terms of working with brands, and so I've learned a ton from her. So go ahead and check out her course as well. Those are the two right now that I would recommend. I'm also taking some other courses that I paid around $300 for, and I'll share with you guys uh, that review if I like it. Um, if I don't, then I won't share it. <laughs> but so there you guys have it. That is my December income report. I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I just love creating videos like this because number one, I can inspire some of you guys out there. I know a lot of you guys might be frustrated because you're trying to get it off the ground, but honestly, the journey is so worth it because you're learning so many new skills in addition to making money online. And it's just, it's just really fun. And I know that um, also the reason why I'm sharing this is that I can share um, my progress from where I started to where I'm at now. And hopefully you guys are inspired by that of all the channels that I'm running I think I shared with you guys like five or six of them I'm only making money off of two um, but I have a few more in the works and the goal is to diversify and create um, different product lines and services on the things that I like that will stick uh, and that I enjoy it's just fun uh, just to see how all these projects spin up and which one sticks and also understand what content I love creating and which content I don't um, but overall it's fun and if you guys need a kick in the butt I'm just gonna tell you I've got four kids I have a corporate career I also have a, have a husband and a house to maintain and so if you guys want to be inspired to create content maybe that'll give you guys a kick in the butt because I'm doing this in the margins of life and it's really crazy but it's really fun at the same time and my kids are a part of it um, they're learning uh, a lot from just content creation in general I don't want them to be like youtubers but I, I do want to show them that um, it does take work like they're watching these YouTube videos right and I just want to show them the work that's behind all of that and so they see that whenever I'm creating content. So anyway, hope you guys find that helpful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to help answer them. Take care guys. Bye.